We know silicon atoms have four electrons in their valence shell. Phosphorus atoms, they have five electrons in their valence shell. So if we inject phosphorus in a silicon piece, every phosphorus atom would make covalent bonds with four adjacent uh, silicon atoms and therefore would fill its valence shell. Therefore, we, we would have one extra electron. Remember, four of them have four covalent bonds with four adjacent silicon atoms, but it has five electrons in its valence shell, so one of the electrons would be free. So for every phosphor atom that you inject, you would have one free electron. The important note is that previously we talked about the free electrons in intrinsic silicon piece, and we explained as an electron would get the thermal energy, it would break out of the covalent bond. So if we have one extra electron breaking out of the bond, it means that we have a hole there as well. But in here, by doping or injecting phosphorus, the free electron hasn't come from any covalent bond. It was from the phosphorus uh, atom. Therefore, for any phosphor atom that you inject, you would have one free electron, but no new hole would be created. So if previously we had 10 to the power of 10 as the number of free electrons in the one cubic centimeter of the silicon piece and 10 to the power of 10 holes, obviously for every electron that breaks out of a bond in the silicon piece, you would have one hole as well. And we said, well, if you multiply them by, by each other, we said the value would be Ni squared and we explained this previously in the last lecture. This equation would always hold which means if we add 10 to the power of 15 uh, phosphorus atoms in one cubic centimeter or 10 to the power of 17, which these are uh, typical values, then we would have the same number of electrons injected. We show this by N of D. D is for don donor, which means that phosphorus is donating electrons to our SI piece. Now, the thing is, what would be the new number for the free electrons and free holes? First of all, for the number of electrons, 10 to the power of 10 is ignorable with respect to 10 to, the, to 10 to the power of 15 to 10 to the power of 17. So we could say the number of free electrons is actually N of D. What about the number of holes? Well, first of all, for every electron that you inject, some of them might fill the previous holes that were there. So you expect that the number of holes decrease and therefore somehow explaining why this equation holds. It's much more complicated, but somehow it's, it's, it explains that why such equation would hold. So if we replace N with N of D, then we, we could say that the number of holes would be equal to Ni squared divided by the number of donor atoms or for phosphorus atoms that we are injecting. We say electrons in here are the majority carriers and holes are the minority carriers. So, and we call this new SI piece as an N type. So for an N type piece, an, an N type, first of all, why would inject something? Our goal was to increase the number of uh, free charges so that we could have a bigger current. So we injected phosphorus because it had one extra electron in its valence shell, therefore contributing to the free charge by one for every atom, phosphor atom that you inject. In here, we call this piece as N-type and we say for when obviously we say the number of electrons would be the number of phosphorus that we are injecting. So what if we added a, an element, an atom like boron, which has three electrons in its valence shell? Well, obviously you would expect that three of them would have a three uh, uh, covalent bonds with three silicon atoms. And then we would have one hole here. And we explain what, why, what we mean by the abstraction of hole. In a way, we say if we apply a positive voltage here with respect to the other, then one electron here would get some energy and it would break out of the bond and would fill this hole. Another electron would here would do the same. And another here would do the same. So the hole is moving to the left. Even to electrons, many electrons, many bound electrons are moving to the right but you could abstract it as if one hole is moving to the left. 
So we say for every boron atom that we are injecting in the silicon piece, we are adding one hole. So the same way that NP, we said we would always hold, and if we inject boron atoms, we say the number of holes would be the same number of boron atoms that we are injecting, which we show as N of A, A for acceptor. It accepts electron. The number of electron would almost doesn't change. But again, we say since this equation has to hold, it means by adding new holes, those free electrons would just uh, go to the to these holes and would fill them in a way. So n times n of a would be equal to would be equal to n of n of i squared from this equation, right? Therefore, the n, which is the number of free electrons, would be equal to n i squared divided by n of a or the number of holes in this case obviously electrons free electrons which are shown by n would be the minority carriers and obviously n of a or n of acceptors would be the majority carriers in the next lecture we are going to explain how we could use such a thing